Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live. My name is Robert Govea. I am a criminal defense attorney at the R&R Law Group. We're located in the always beautiful and sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we're talking about the Trump raid, FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, where the president resides. And we've been unpacking this shocking news. We're going to continue to stay with it throughout the rest of the show today. And we've got three big topics that we are going to attend to. You can see as we go to our show notes mind map, this is what we've got here. Uh, first and foremost, our first segment is going to be talking about this guy, Judge Reinhardt. And we talked about him yesterday. The Actually, the U.S. court website retracted his bio, right? They sort of privated it. And a lot of people have a lot of questions about this guy, but we learn a little bit more about the warrant status because several individuals, the New York Times and Judicial Watch, they actually filed something with the court asking the judge to unseal it. And as we'll see today, the judge is actually issuing an order and we'll take a look at the court docket and unpack some of that. A lot of questions about this warrant. This woman was on with Jesse Waters last night. And so we'll go through this. More details emerge from the actual raid in Mar-a-Lago and Eric Trump came out. And so he gave us sort of a summation of what actually went down on Monday. We learned that Scott Perry, representative from Pennsylvania, is also under the thumb of the FBI and he got his cell phone seized. So we'll take a look at that story. And then we're going to ask ourselves, what's all this about? And what are the consequences? What are the political repercussions of this. Matt Gates is going to make an appearance on the program here today via a video here on our show notes. And we also have two stories, one from the AP and one from, I believe it's Politico. And they're saying that a lot of people are saying this is backfiring big time on the Democrats, that this is handing Donald Trump a victory, coronation on a silver platter when election season comes. And so we are going to go through all of that and more. So we'll save that for segment number one. In segment number two, we're good, then going to refresh our recollections a little bit about this guy. You know him, Chuck Schumer. He's been around since like the 1910s or something, been around forever. And he has a very interesting clip that is percolating around the interwebs these days. And so we're going to start up here with him. You can see that yesterday we spent some time asking ourselves, why wasn't he dunking on Donald Trump. He showed up on Rachel Maddow's show. Yet this was a part of yesterday's broadcast. And he 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 was asked by Rachel, you know, your political enemy, like the nemesis of the Democratic Party, just fell off his roof. Are, are you going to join me and and celebrate that? And he said, I don't want to talk about it. And she said, uh, Okay, let's try this again. How about I ask you a different question? And he said, I don't want to talk about that either. Next question. And so it was a very frustrating interview. Even Rachel Maddow was like, I've got five, seven more minutes to kill in this segment before it's a commercial break. So you're totally screwing me. And uh, it turns out, well, there's another clip that appeared where old Chuck Schumer came out and he said something like, you don't want to anger the intelligence agencies. You don't want to anger the FBI or the CIA because they can screw you six ways from Sunday, is what he said. <laughs> that leads us to all ask ourselves, is that what is happening right now? Very well could be. So we've got that clip. We'll play that. And then because yesterday we spent a lot of time sort of uh, you know seeing what the Republicans had to say about this, we do need to make sure we're aware of what these Democrats are uh, you know yapping about. Here is Pelosi. She just got back from Taiwan and she almost caused World War III. And so she had, you know, People had some questions for her. It's like, why did you almost bring us to the brink of a nuclear war or whatever? But, uh, you know, she did get asked about this Trump raid. And so we'll check in with what uh, Pelosi has to say. This interesting fella, his name is John Heilman. He showed up on, uh, I think, MSNBC. We've got several MSNBC clips today. But this guy, John Hale Heilman, something like that, he said that this is all Trump's fault. <laughs> the fact that Trump was sitting at Mar-a-Lago or his family was, he was not there. And there's some you know, interesting things about that. It seems like they wanted to raid it when he was not there because they knew that if he was there, it would turn into a, a big political spectacle. But he said, Donald Trump is making this political. John went on and missing, you know, and he said, you know, the FBI just tried to keep this all under the rug. But old Trumpo, he's the one who publicized it. And so we'll take a look at that one. And then finally, on this segment, we've got this guy, this guy, this poor guy. He's just so heartbroken. He doesn't want you 
to use the word raid. Doesn't like the t if you say that. It's offensive to him. It hurts his feelings. We have to be very... He he's basically a perfect FBI agent or ex-FBI agent because he's very sensitive, very emotional, doesn't like bad words that might, you know, rub somebody the wrong way. And so, you know, he's here and we've got a, a little clip from him where he's kind of whining to MSNBC. Please call it the legitimate thing so it makes us feel good so that I can put my sticker on my refrigerator. We'll go through that one. And then lastly, you know, the Trump onslaught continues. And that was really the title of the thumbnail today. But we've been following this woman. You know her, Letitia, the tishiest of all the tishies, James. And she called herself Tish James. You know, it's kind of like hip to be like Obama, you know, or like Oprah. So she was like, I'm Tish. She posted that all over her Twitter accounts. And, and so, you know, we kind of make fun of her for that because she's, She's a very interesting woman. She's basically made her entire career on the back of prosecuting Donald Trump, right? Call her, calling herself a sort of a, a purveyor of justice as the attorney general when her entire career has been about prosecuting Donald Trump. And so she's got this very interesting little facial you know, twitch she does. And like, I don't like to make fun of people. Like, you know, if she had a, like a legitimate facial twitch, like that's, you know, it's not fun to make fun of somebody. I might develop one, you know, anytime now. But the point is, don't think it's that she actually has a like it's a TDS type of thing because look at this face she comes look at this she she it only happens when she's talking about Trump it gets all contorted and sort of like the dark side so very uh you know very interesting woman we're gonna have to listen to her unfortunately today she's I've got several clips of her we have like three minutes of Letitia James so I save that for the last segment in case um you want to start you know consuming adult beverages or whatever you need to do to, uh, to, to survive this ordeal. But as you can see, my friends, we do have a lot to get into. And as always, if you want to be a part of the show, the place to do that is over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. That is our amazing community. And let's see who's chatting away over there. We've got Tweak, Jason on blast. We've got JC, the music man. Uh, he says, yeah, I make fun of myself. I do the same thing, obviously. John McGarvey is here and we have, uh, <laughs> We've got other people join over there in the chat. If you want to see what I'm laughing at Phantasma Gloria and others are over there on rumble. I see Vienti kiss is modding up the place. We've got candy gas. I think is the only one over. Oh no. Hey, what's up? Free Appalachian over there. Of course on YouTube, we have our YouTube members there in the chat and you can click that join button right next to that subscribe button. Shout outs to lean is in the house. Also modding down the fort for us along with just cause, but shout out to Ronnie Cole, Curtis Bartle, Mark Owens, peas and butter, Shane Souza. And Jenny B in the house. All YouTube members, you can click that join button. And you get you get the morning walk and talks, which are a lot of fun. We had a good morning walk and talk today. So if you're looking for a little additional content and to carry on the conversation before and after the show, membership is appreciated. And of course, right, we talk a lot about criminal law on this channel. That's because I'm a criminal lawyer and I have a law firm called the RNR Law Group. We're located in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was just there today. We had a two hour training with the entire legal team. And I got to tell you, I think it was incredibly successful. Sometimes, you know, when you present in front of your team, they're all looking at you like, oh, great, another meeting. But I don't think this was one of those. This was a very good meeting, and I think everybody's pretty excited about it. We're excited about it. We love to deliver safety, clarity, and hope to good people charged with crimes, and we offer free case evaluations. And so we'd love it if you kept us busy with your referrals, because uh, that's our passion. You know, that's what we really do. We have an amazing team of people in Scottsdale. And we love doing the good work. All right. And so now without any further ado, let's get into it, shall we? The Trump judge who ordered the warrant in the Mar-a-Lago raid conducted by the FBI, his name is Reinhardt, and he was the subject of a lot of questions during a prior show. We were wondering about his biography. Where did he come from? Who did he represent? And what is his story? And yesterday we learned that the court where his biography is housed, they actually sort of privated all of his information. They didn't want him to be docked and so on and so forth. And so we're keeping close tabs on that. But we can see here today, we're talking about new details that came out as a result of the search warrant. This comes over from Eric Trump and the Daily Mail. We'll read through that. But a lot of open questions still exist and they are going to continue to exist as long as we don't know much about the warrant. And so a lot of eyeballs have been really peeled on this. What does the warrant say? What's in it, right? What did they take? What's the subject of it? Is this the first domino in a long list of additional warrants that are gonna be coming? Like, did they need to get one box to see what's in the box? Oh, we thought that was in there. And now that we know that's in there, we can connect the dots, connect the chain 
and go investigate other facets of Donald Trump. We don't know. So we've been asking ourselves, what is the warrant covering? And we don't have a lot of answers. We're going to see that there were questions about this on Fox News last night. We're also going to see that the judge actually, and we're going to start here, ordered a response, which is an update on the actual court docket that sort of tells us what's going on with the warrant. And there are new questions about whether or not there was an informant. There was an exclusive over, I think, from Newsweek. And they're telling us that an informer told the FBI exactly what documents that Trump was hiding and where, right? So that's sort of, they have an inside man or woman. They've got a mole in Mar-a-Lago. Doesn't sound good. So we'll go through all of that. Now, while Donald Trump is under this onslaught, we can see that there are other Republican officials, other even legislators who are also the subject of the Democratic wrath. This guy, Representative Scott Perry, he comes out of Pennsylvania. He had his cell phone seized by the same FBI that is apparently investigating Donald Trump. It might be a separate investigation. It could be the same investigation. Don't really know too many details about it. But what you can see happening, it's sort of like in Star Wars, right? Execute Order 66 or something. And then everybody is just dropping all over the place. And this has been going on for a long time, really, ever since the January 6 riots took place. They have been using that as a cudgel to go after their political enemies. But now we talked about this previously. It's sort of the break glass in case of emergency. They're running out of options. Donald Trump seems like he's only becoming stronger. And what are they going to do about it? So now they have to sort of escalate the entire uh, saga. So they've done that. They're going after Scott Perry. I'm guessing others are you know, going to be on the list soon enough. It's just a matter of time. But is this having the response that they want it to have? Or right? is this being effective? I don't know. But we have some stories here from the AP and from others saying that they're handing Donald Trump the election on a silver platter. And so I want to start here with the judge ordering a response. And if you remember on this yesterday, we looked at this is the public, a publicly accessible court docket over from Court Listener. You can go on this website and just uh, add this, create an account, donate to the project. I do. And it, they, they do a very good job of scraping data from the public courts. And so here you can see we're in the court that belongs to Bruce Reinhardt, same guy we talked about previously. And on August 5th, which was Monday, that's when we saw the sealed magistrate matter, search warrant, all of that be entered on 8-5. Okay, so not a whole lot here. The magistrate judge signed off on it. We got the warrant that was sort of authorized. And then a lot of activity took place today. Okay, so yesterday when we were looking at this, we didn't have any of these minute entries down here. But now we do. And look, it just keeps going. It goes all the way down. So let's parse through this real quickly and see what is happening. So we've got several different system entries saying that these are just restricted and sealed. These are sort of placeholder entries. So we can't see anything about them, right? They're just saying, hey, it's sealed. Something happened here. Uh, America, you don't get to see it, but we do. But take a look at this one. Now, Judicial Watch, uh, Mr. Fitton, right? Tom Fitton over there. He is somebody who filed this motion, a motion to unseal the search warrant filed by Judicial Watch. So let's take a quick look at this. You can see it is four pages. We've talked sort of a lot. We haven't talked a lot about these types of motions, but these are sort of you know, public records request motions. There's going to be very similar requests from the New York Times and from other news entities because they, they want the records. And here's what they say. They say the movement, Judicial Watch, respectfully requests this court unseal the warrant materials. On August 8th, FBI executed a search warrant at, at Trump's residence in Palm Beach. According to media reports, this is over the Presidential Records Act. According to this court docket, all entries, including the search warrant, are sealed. We can't see anything. Judicial Watch is a nonprofit, and we have a mission of educating the public about operations and activities that take place throughout America. Here, Judicial Watch is, in, is investigating the potential politicization of the FBI and the DOJ and whether the FBI and the DOJ are abusing their law enforcement powers to harass a likely future political opponent of President Biden. Like literally, right? He's the sitting president. If the court were to unseal the materials, Judicial Watch would obtain the materials, analyze them and make them available to the public. Easy. Unsealing the records, therefore, would further Judicial Watch's mission of educating the public. Federal courts have long recognized the common law right of access to these types of things. This extends to pre-indictment and search warrant materials, and they give us some case law, 1996, quoting, in Ray, a search of office suites for world, right, and so on and so forth. So we get some sort of rules here. They say, look, judge, based on this case law, all three considerations, all three of those cases we just cited there, support Judicial Watch's motion to unseal. Here's why. 
Judicial Watch seeks access to the warrant materials as part of its educational mission. If it's unsealed, Judicial Watch gets to do more education. They would obtain them and make them available to the public. Second, the public has an urgent and a substantial interest in understanding the predicament or the predicate for the execution of the unprecedented search warrant of a private residence of a former president and a likely political opponent. And third, no official explanation or information has been released about the search, right? Where has the White House been? Where has the DOJ been? Where is Attorney General Merrick Garland explaining what this was all about? Nowhere. Where's Corrine Jean-Pierre giving us a semblance of assurance that this is not a political partisan witch hunt by a politicized partisan hack FBI? Nobody's giving any reassurances at all. So they say, as of the filing of this motion, the public record consists solely of speculation and innuendo. And Corrine came out yesterday and said, well, we don't have to comment on ongoing investigations. And we say, uh, this isn't the normal ongoing investigation, okay? This isn't crackhead Hunter Biden. You don't get to use that excuse anymore. This is the former president who's running again, and he's got 83 million plus people who are going to stand behind his side. So in short, the historical presumption, writes Judicial Watch, of access to warrant materials vastly outweighs any interest the government may have in keeping the materials under seal. We need to see it. Given the political context and the highly unusual action of executing a search warrant at the residence of a former president and a likely future political opponent, it is essential that the public understands as soon as possible the basis for the government's action. Any government interest in securing the identities of witnesses and confidential sources, if any, may be addressed by the appropriate redactions from the search warrant itself. So let us see it. If there's anything problematic on the warrant, you can go ahead and sharpie it out like you do everything else. For the foregoing reasons, Judicial Watch respectfully requests that you unseal all of these documents. It says specifically, unseal the search warrant materials in this case as expeditiously as possible. Signed by Michael Budwick, who is a lawyer out of Florida representing Judicial Watch. So, right, that is, you know, one motion. There's going to be a similar motion that sort of looks like that. That is also uh, filed to unseal this, a letter by the Times Union. Okay, so another news entity that's going to do it here. I think the New York Times filed one. Yep, another one. Third party motion to intervene filed by the New York Times. Right, same, it's going to be the same general framework. I guess we can take a quick look at it. But here is, uh, yeah, here it is. So probably, what is it? 11 pages, a little longer. Uh, you know, they, were, they filed these sort of as a matter of course. And it's really the same arguments. So it, yeah, the time, Times has standing to look at this. This court should grant access to search warrant records. So pretty, pretty nuts and bolts, okay? Not a whole lot of new information there. I think the Judicial Watch one was probably uh, a little bit more succinct. So we'll leave it at that. Now, again, a lot of people have questions about this because what is in the warrant? And a lot of uh, kind of lowbrow, you know, unsophisticated commentators like Eric Swalwell, for example, is a representative out of, I think, California. And he was on Twitter saying Donald Trump should unseal the warrant or, or something. It's like, well, he doesn't run the courts and uh, you want him to publish it. So what they're doing is they're shifting the burden. They're saying Donald Trump shouldn't have to be proven guilty. Donald Trump should have should be uh, proving himself innocent, essentially. Right. The government doesn't have the burden of proof. Trump has the burden of proof. And we talked about this on our morning walk and talk today where I was saying, well, look, I mean, if that's the, the standard that stinky Eric Swalwell wants to have, well, then he can just prove himself innocent of making bang, bang with Fang Fang, right? The Chinese spy. So he can come out and he can show us his phone records and he can publish all of his Facebook messages and he can show us his Tinder account and, you know, all of the other spies that he was talking with. And he can say, see, I was all with all these spies and they can verify that I was not with Fang Fang. So, right, it, 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 it's, it's a burden shifting attempt and it's really not appropriate but they know better. They're doing it anyways. So is the warrant something that the Trump people even have? We don't know. Here is the conversation that took place with Jesse Waters. And I think this woman was in conversation with Trump's lawyers who were actually there at the scene. She says they don't even have it. People are saying, oh, well, why doesn't the president's attorney just release the warrant? They were probably handed a warrant before the feds showed up to kick the door down, why wouldn't you do that? Actually, um, my understanding from the attorneys on the ground was that they weren't given the warrant. They were allowed to see it and then taken back. Oh, so they don't have a copy That's of it. That's my understanding. Oh. Okay, so don't know. And many people say, well, that may be because it's a national security thing, right? They're looking for documents that are classified. And so uh, Trump's Trump has 
security clearances, right? But his lawyers don't. Like Trump was a former president, but his lawyer was not. So why would they get access to know what's in there when they don't have the same privileges and the same clearance and all this stuff? Well, we'll see. But if it really is just about the records, well, may mean this whole thing is sort of much ado about nothing. Now, we do have new details that came out from Eric Trump, and he says that there were 30 agents who were there and they refused to hand over the warrant. Right? They kicked the lawyer off the property, they rifled through clothes, and they say that mar lago staff refused to turn off security cameras and how they refused to turn off security cameras. So, you know, in addition to all of the p potential constitutional violations that are already, you know, sort of, uh, in, let's say, we can't say violated, but we can say implicated, certainly. The question becomes, there are other criminal protections in place. Are they violating those? Okay, so let's say Donald Trump is not the former president, like as, which by itself creates a whole insane amount of problems. Let's just say he's a regular guy and the FBI shows up at your residence and they say, I want to search everything. And, you, you know, I want my warrant. I want my lawyer here. I want all of these things and all. So are there potential legal violations that are consequential once this moves forward? We don't even know. Right. So my, I guess my point is we're going to have a political sort of defense. We're going to have constitutional defenses, presidential defenses. Then we're going to have just your standard regular old bland criminal defenses in addition to everything else. So uh, we, we don't even know what it looks like yet. Eric Trump revealed FBI agents refused to hand over the search warrant when they were there for their raid. He spoke exclusively to Daily Mail. Former President's son said 30 agents arrived on property and asked staff to turn the security cameras off, but they refused. So we'll see more of that. Good call. He also said that the attorney who was there was forced to stand at the end of the Mar-a-Lago driveway while the team searched inside and allegedly used safe crackers to break into his father's safe. He called the raid another coordinated attack, which I agree with. The latest explosive account comes after the DOJ is now facing mounting pressure to explain what grounds they had for the search. Christina Bob called into a show, said there's 30 agents here called Eric. Wow. Uh, Eric. Stood at the driveway. Yeah. All right. So you can see here uh, some photographs of what it looked like at the scene. People are taking photographs of these officers who are uh, uh, a pictured armed Secret Service agents stand outside the entrance. So you've got the Secret Service are now sort of coordinating with the FBI to rummage through Trump and Melania's belongings. Here's a quick clip. This woman was on somebody's show, Christina Bob. She was on the let's listen. So I don't know what time they got there. I got a phone call around 10 a.m. that I needed to get to Mar-a-Lago immediately. There was, you know, incident, something happening, and I needed to get there and try to, you know, figure it out. So I arrived about 1030. The FBI was already there, had already started their search. So I'm guessing they probably got there around 9, 930. They got there and they had a team of a couple dozen agents that dispersed on the property and did what the FBI does. Just like in a movie, you know, you see them. Uh, sure. Doing their process. So, yeah. Now, you were on. Amazing. So they were just kind of going through everything. FBI declined to comment. Eric said he would be thrilled to find out if there was a valid search warrant. Lawyer showed up, said, when I arrived, I kind of announced myself as the legal representation for Trump. I asked to see a copy of the warrant. Initially, they refused. They said, you know, we don't have to show it to you. She said, well, there was a little bit of ex an exchange there. And eventually she saw it. She said, it was very thin, I'd say. And as you can tell from the public records and the supporting documentation, the warrant has been sealed. So we just still don't know too much about it. Now, there's you know, this is just sort of the beginning of, you know, probably a lot more of this. A lot of questions are being raised about whether there was a uh, an informant within the Trump residence who is sort of communicating with the FBI, somebody telling him, "Oh, come in here, it's in this closet. There's all sorts of boxes over here, this that and the other." Is there a mole in Mar-a-Lago? We don't know. The raid on Mar-a-Lago, according to Newsweek, and they say this is their exclusive. This was based on information from an FBI confidential human source, which, as we know, are just so reliable, right? All of those CHSs, very, very reliable when they were, uh, I don't know, plotting 
a fake kidnapping hoax. Real reliable there for Governor Whitmer, right? They say one who was able to identify what classified documents former president was still hiding and even the location of those documents two senior government officials told Newsweek. The officials who have direct knowledge of the FBI's deliberations and were granted anonymity in order to discuss sensitive matters said the raid of Trump's Florida residence was deliberately timed to occur when the former president was away. They don't want him there. They don't want him to be able to sort of capitalize on any of the media presence. FBI and decision makers in Washington and Miami thought that denying the former president a photo op or a platform from which to grandstand or a, to attempt to thwart the raid would lower the profile of the event, say one source. The effort to keep the raid low key failed, they say. Instead, it prompted a furious response from GOP leaders and Trump supporters. What a spectacular backfire, said one Justice Department official. Somebody said, I know that there is much speculation out there that this is a political prosecution, but it is really the best and the worst of bureaucracy in action. They wanted to punctuate the fact that this was just a routine law enforcement action stripped of any political overtones. And yet they got exactly the opposite. Both senior government officials say the raid was scheduled with no political motive. But in planning the date and time, the FBI were focused on the former president's schedule. They wanted to avoid the media circus. And we know the rest of this story here. So is there a mole in Mar-a-Lago? We do not know, but we do know that the... Democrats and the DOJ have not stopped there. They are continuing to go after other Republicans, including Scott Perry. He had his cell phone seized. This, this guy right here, this story came out today as well. Republican Scott Perry of Pennsylvania said on Tuesday, the FBI came to his house and they said, your cell phone is now our cell phone. He posted, he said, this morning while traveling with my family, three FBI agents visited me and they seized my cell phone. The search is connected to an investigation being conducted by the Justice Department Inspector General. Watchdog group, same guy who went after Jeffrey Clark and others. And again, spokespeople for the DOJ and the Inspector General both declined to comment. Because when you're going after your political enemies in America, why comment about it? Just wait until you're done. You know, what do you have to say? What do you want to say? Uh, yeah, I'm prosecuting my political enemies. Uh, it's going to take several months and we're going to use every single tool we have at our disposal. Take that and print it. Perry is closely linked to Clark. He's come under scrutiny and they're saying that this guy was, you know, a, a Trump ally and he wanted a pardon and all of that stuff. So, right, it's not just being limited to Donald Trump. It's taking place all over the place. Matt Gates was on the air and I think he was talking to uh, this guy over on uh, Newsmax. Let's listen to him. Well, we have seen in the case of Meghan McCain and Asa Hutchinson, a bit of a rhino stampede toward President Trump because yeah. we see how unprecedented these actions are. But speaking directly to Tim Scott, we should wait and hear all this out and wait and see how it goes. That's exactly what the weak Republicans were saying during the Mueller investigation. Like, I feel like I've been to this movie before where McConnell and a lot of the McConnellites just say, oh, well, we should wring our hands and hope that President Trump didn't break the law. The reality is if the FBI and DOJ are cheating to try to ensnare President Trump in criminality, it won't even be the first time they've done it. And we caught them red handed last time during the Russia hoax where they were abusing the law enforcement and national security process Michael to launder Sussman. political dirt into the ether of criminal investigations. I mean, this was a highly performative raid, Rob. You had the entire uh, circle around President Trump's great American flag full of black SUVs. The FBI even rented a rider truck so they could bring in like 30 armed agents to Mar-a-Lago of all places. If they wanted documents, they could have sent a subpoena, but they were trying to send a message because they know that they've got an inflation in, you know, bill that really isn't an inflation bill that the American people don't support. And so they're trying to scare the country about MAGA because they know they're doomed in the upcoming midterm. Yeah, and I think he's right on the money with that. It's the break glass in case of emergency. They are panicking. And it's not just Matt Gates saying this, okay? This is the AP that came out yesterday. They said the GOP, as Matt Gates was sort of hinting, is rallying around Trump following the FBI and the search of the former president's property. 
For much of the year, they say small cracks in Trump's support has been showing dissatisfied Republicans were all wondering, what are we going to do? But after the FBI executed a search warrant, Republican Party swiftly united behind the former president. Well, yeah. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, who represents his strongest potential primary challenger, described the Biden administration as a regime and called Monday's Mar-a-Lago search the improperly thing. He said, another escalation in the weaponization of federal agencies against the regime's political opponents. GOP came out behind him. Robust French defense of Trump came out, and it serves as a fresh reminder of the former president's enduring grip. The poor AP writers, oh God, we're screwed. The sooner he kicks off the campaign, the better, says GOP representative Jim Banks. Banks was among a dozen Republicans who said anything you know about this stuff. And so that's over from the AP, and it's not just the AP. Okay, here's the other story. This one is just uh, hilarious. They are just very upset about this. Politico is reporting on this one. They say, oh gosh, what have we done? The FBI search of Trump's Florida residence is already rearranging the midterm election landscape and it handed him a lifeline, says somebody. Let's see what this one says. Republican primaries resume one day after the FBI search and it only appears to have cemented, oh, love that word, Donald Trump's standing in the GOP ahead of 2024. Republican strategists working for potential rivals to Trump ahead of the next election, we're already preparing for the likelihood that he could now clear the field. <gasps> Republicans across four midterm primary states on Tuesday were rushing to his side. Election deniers had a good night, so did women. But the week belongs to Trump. Here are five key takeaways. Somebody said, it'll be a coronation at this point. The most consequential development in the Republican primary this week did not come on Tuesday, but a day before on Mar-a-Lago. One Republican strategist who advises a potential rival, okay, so somebody's working for a non-Trumper, says completely handed him a lifeline, says, quote, unbelievable. It put everybody in the wagon for Trump again. It's just taken the wind out of everybody's sails. So I wonder who he's working for. Mike, maybe Mike Pence or something. Maybe, maybe Adam Kinzinger. I don't know. For any other Trumpian candidate, the strategist says it's over. It's over. It's over for any other Trumpian candidate said it's over. John Thomas, a Republican political strategist who had been organizing a pact to support DeSantis said on Tuesday, uh, we can hang it up. He said, we, we can just hang it up. <laughs> he says it couldn't be clearer. If Trump wants it at this point, I don't see how it's not his. It'll be a coronation at this point, not a primary. Republicans seem to know this on Tuesday, not just at the national level. Republican Party enamored by Trump's grievance politics. Eh. The, the FBI cast him more plainly as ever as a pros the FBI search cast him more plainly than ever as a politician persecuted by the left. Yeah, and they won, right? They won all over the place. And Joe Kent won, Arizona, Clean House, Carrie Lake, and many others are all, you know, winning and they're probably going to win the general election. And so as we can see, a lot of fallout from the sort of the, the Trump raid, but the consequences for the Democrats, well, you know, they're trying to smear the former president, trying to rub his nose in sort of uh, some of this baggage, but maybe backfiring pretty badly as some people are saying Trump just got the coronation and, you know, in this type of environment, Maybe that means he's the next president. We'll have to see. But that is Donald Trump, the Mar-a-Lago raid. Trump judge ordering a warrant response. Thanks for continuing to subscribe to this channel and following along as we cover this story. All right. So that is the Trump judge. And whew, we've got another segment coming up hot right now. It is the Chuck Schumer. You remember Chuck Schumer? Oh, gosh. Yeah, so we have got to go through him a little bit. And we've got a lot of Democrats to listen to. So we better just we better just get started on it. Let me close some of this up here a little bit. Let's see what's going on in the chats. We've got Lean. I see Lean. Cool guy, 18,000s over there. We're going to close this guy, Frank Figliuzzi. Uh, and then we're finally going to jump into it. Oh, Mark Pate said, it's been reported that record donations to Trump and the GOP have come in as well. And that was our first super chat from Mark Pate over on YouTube. And so that one's going to come up here in a quick second. Yeah, I, 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 I don't doubt that, Mark. I mean, I have to imagine that that is true. It's probably going to be true for a uh, for a long period of time. I mean, I, you know, the energy levels, just the energy levels alone. I mean, some of the emails I've gotten alone, it's I think it's going to cause a lot of energy and 
kind of a really bad time to do it, right? Joe Biden was sort of, they were trying to play this game with him. Like he was, he was uh, on this up swing. You know, like he was doing well, he got the bill passed and all this crap. And then now it's like, it's all Trump again. And Trump thrives when it's all Trump. When the story's about Trump, man, he thrives. It's how he won in 2016. He's going to probably do it again. Probably going to do it again. But for now, we have got to sort of jump into Chuck Schumer. The raid at Trump's residence in Mar-a-Lago conducted by the FBI may have been prognosticated. It may have been foretold. It may have even been wanted, desired by this man right here, Chuck Schumer. He is a Democrat senator. And he said something very interesting some time ago that sort of leads you to believe that maybe he knew this thing was coming. So today we're going to take a look at his statement because uh, previously we were wondering why Chuck Schumer wasn't gleeful and giddy over the Donald Trump raid, right? He's a, like the a, a arch enemy of Chuck Schumer. Donald Trump is like the worst thing that's ever happened to him. And he really wants to see him fail and suffer. In fact, he's made a big part of his career about that. And so when Donald Trump's residence got ransacked by federal agents, you'd expect him to be very excited and gleeful about it, but he wasn't. And when Rachel Maddow asked him about this specifically, very strange responses. This is what we got from Chuck Schumer basically the day after, once the news was breaking. The guy who normally loves to rant and rave about what an evil monster Donald Trump is said this. It's news from South Florida tonight that the FBI has has searched the home of the former president. Yeah, well, I know nothing about it other than what I've read, like everybody else. So I think it's wise for me to withhold comment until we learn more. Okay. I appreciate that. I do have to tell you that one of your, um, not colleagues, but another congressional leader, the uh, House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, just made a statement online um, about the FBI search warrant, executing the search warrant at the former president. So can you home. answer that? Um, he said, when Republicans take back the House, they will conduct immediate oversight of this department. And then he says this, quote, Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. Yes. So effectively threatening Attorney General Garland uh, in response to the FBI having executed the search warrant tonight. I know that you don't want to talk about the substance of the matter at yeah. Mar-a-Lago, but his head. I do want to ask your reaction to what Mr. McCarthy has Look, said. Look, I think we don't, none of us know the facts and any comments are premature. Well, that's very interesting. And Rachel Maddow, she, uh, okay. And any comments are premature. Okay. 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 So, okay. So that's Rachel Maddow. And now, right, we're asking ourselves, well, that's very weird. Why is Chuck Schumer not answering questions? Well, maybe because this old clip circulated back in 2017 when Chuck Schumer was on with Rachel Maddow. We're learning a little bit more about this fella. Don't know if you remember this clip, but here he is sort of uh, warning Donald Trump. Donald Trump is in office at this time. He's the president. Donald Trump has been speaking out about the FBI, been speaking out about the intelligence agencies. Here is what he said. You take on the intelligence community. They have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. Whoa. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence... That is a warning. He's being very dumb to do this. And if you attack the intelligence agencies... They've got six ways from Sunday to get back at you. So even a you know, tough real estate guy who's highly sophisticated, he's not the CIA or the FBI, all right? Chuck Schumer, a little warning there. Let's start I'll this just at the top. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated I don't know, to? but I, from what I am told... They are very upset with how he has treated <laughs> wow. them and talked about them. And we need the intelligence community. We don't like know what's Look at the Russian hacking. Without the intelligence community, we wouldn't have uh, discovered it. Do and you we think they're, first of all, I don't know what they're talking about. The, Ru the, Russian, the Russian hacking Facebook? Okay. Were they, what, what did they swap? Well, like 2,000 votes or something like that? Is, that? is that what they swung? I don't even know. I don't even know if that's accurate. It was ridiculous. So he is now giving the FBI very solid motive, right? He's saying, hey, well, 
they, they're, they're very angry with him. They have a high bias against him. He has an agenda to try to dismantle parts of the intelligence community. I mean, this form of Let me tell taunting you, hostility. Whether you're a super liberal Democrat or a very conservative Republican, you should be against dismantling the intelligence community. No, no, I don't think so. I think it's probably a good call to, uh, hey, to, to, to get rid of him at this point in time. John McGarvey sent in a super chat. We're going to get to John McGarvey's over on, uh, on uh, Locals. Thank you, John. I see that. Wow. So I'm going to have to. Uh... Well, I don't know where it went. There it is. John McGarvey says 98% of mo- monkeypox is in, and 2% are liars. Joe Rogan. I don't want to give medical advice on the YouTube, so I'm not going to read that full comment. But John, John left a, a, that, that comment over on Locals. All right. So. This is Chuck Schumer, and he just got done giving us a very serious warning, saying that if Donald Trump continues to impugn the federal intelligence agencies, they may have a bone to pick with him. Maybe that's exactly what's happening here. Maybe that's why he was so tight-lipped about it. Other Democrats are also responding now. Pelosi just got back from causing World War III, probably not, I mean, maybe not soon, but probably, you know, you know maybe six months or 18 months, we'll see. But here she is now being asked about this because, uh, well, she's the Speaker of the House and she is a Democrat. What's her position? So we have a lot to discuss this morning with Speaker Pelosi, who is joining us for her first interview since returning to Washington. Speaker Pelosi, good morning. It's good to have you with us this morning. My pleasure. Good morning. Well, let's start with the news, uh, breaking news. The FBI carrying out that surprise warrant, a search of Mar-a-Lago, the former president's home, looking for evidence. What do you make of that search? How significant does this strike you to be? Well, I, I've, I, as others, learned on my phone that that had happened. So I don't know very much about it. Oh. Uh, but again, I'm sure that uh, information will be revealed. And when it does. Oh, uh, it's the same answer as Chuck Schumer. I don't know anything about it. All of them. I don't know anything about it. Why are they saying that? Why are they saying that? We'll find out what they were looking for. It seems to have something to do with presidential documents, but I really am not in a position to talk about it because all I know is what's in the public domain. I have no idea. Does it strike you as a a pretty serious step for the Justice Department to take? Yes, I think it does. Uh, I I was questioning it because all I saw on my phone was that Donald (laughs) Trump said that the, uh, uh, the, the... visit took place and described it in pretty harsh terms. It would be interesting to find out exactly uh, what the warrant was in order to have what, what the order was to have a search warrant and for what purpose. Before but again, we can no, no idea has no idea. Speaker of the House, one of the most powerful people in the world. No, I had no idea. Don't really speculate. And before we leave it, I just want to mention House Republican leader, your counterpart, Kevin McCarthy, put out a statement responding to the search. And he said, in part, when Republicans take back the House, we will conduct immediate oversight of this Justice Department. Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. Do you have a response? Well, first of all, I think the Democrats are going to win the House. We've been prepared for it uh, for a long time. And now with what Ro- what's happening with Roe v. Wade and uh, the legislation that we are passing, I think that uh, whatever it, the leader is saying is probably idle. But nonetheless, uh, we believe in the rule of law, and that's what our country is about, and no person is above the law. No person is above the, the law, not the even the president. Okay. Not even a former president of the United States. Okay, so uh, she's got a lot of opinions on it, but doesn't know much about it, right? So uh, not re- very confused about what actually took place. Just learned on her phone like the rest of us. Nancy Pelosi's on Facebook, you know, talking with her grandkids. And she's, oh, wow, what's going on in my country? She had her, you know, her hangover from her getaway vacation in Taiwan. And does she really think that she's going to keep the House of Representatives? I don't think so. She knows she's on her way out. That's why she went over to have, you know, whatever they drink in Taiwan. I don't know. But here we have another reaction from John Heilman. So while Chuck Schumer was a little bit you know, prognosticatory for us, he was able to foresee the FBI raid against the president. Pelosi doesn't know anything about what's going on. You know, she's just totally clueless, does, you know, totally checked out of the whole thing. John Heilman and this guy, former FBI assistant director Frank Figliuzzi, 
they are now defending the FBI against that evil maniac, Donald Trump. They're saying, you know, look, poor FBI agents, they're just trying to execute lawfully and valid legal search warrants that are, that are signed off on by totally impartial judges that aren't partisan hacks at all. And so for Donald Trump to come out here and castigate them to paint them in a bad light is just so hurtful and offensive. Here's John Heilman doing his little uh, routine here with somebody on MSNBC. It's just hysterical. It's like these guys have never had a had an actual uh, real conflict. Here he is. Um, short fingered vulgarian, um, uh, a spy magazine, which he once co-edited, uh, called him. You know, I, I, yesterday, the DOJ did not make this public. That was not they did not publicize this 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 search of the of Mar-a-Lago. Donald Trump did. Yeah. And it seems to me, for the reasons that the Joyce is kind of implying that that's what this is all about. Trump Trump took this public because he thought it was in his interest to not just to spur these conspiracy theories, but then to put pressure on the DOJ. What would they say? There's nothing they could say. All right, let's finish this clip. That wouldn't that Donald Trump and the right wouldn't make part of their narrative. They'd be attacked for breaking with policy. They'd be attacked for dirtying up Donald Trump, no matter what the words that came out of their mouth are. Well, and let's remember. Is- In other words, the DOJ doesn't have to answer for itself at all. They don't have to explain anything like this. Okay, Everybody under um, the sun, John Heilman knows this, has called this entirely unprecedented. Why? Because it's never happened before in history. So it is an unprecedented activity. And he's saying Donald Trump, I guess, is to blame for making this whole thing partisan for calling out the corrupt, insane FBI, DOJ, everybody over there colluding to do everything they can to conduct an onslaught against Donald Trump. Him calling them out, him making it known that this nefariousness is going on is also evil. So he should just sit there and bend over and take it anytime some government bureaucrat wants to come in and just uh, open up your doors, just let us rummage through all your crap. John Heilman is uh, you know, being being a, a partisan hack there to such a high degree. He knows better than that. Now, also, Frank Figliuzzi is here. And this guy was a former assistant director for the FBI. And he comes out and he's just really upset and emotional about all of this. This story comes over from the Post Millennial. So please go check them out. They do great work and they're good follows on Twitter. But this guy, oh yeah, FBI hack is a good way to uh, to, to label this discourages the use of the term raid on MSNBC. And moments later, the network changes the Chiron. Okay. So the Chiron is this little thing here, right? And we're going to watch this at the bottom. And this guy, you can, he looks like a very gentle man, very, you know, uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, like, look at that face. I don't know. Here on Monday night, the, after the raid, MSNBC was seen changing the wording of the Chiron to reflect the contributor's stance that the FBI agents don't like the word raid. Don't say raid. Don't say raid, they say. Let's watch this ridiculous clip. Um, agents, by the way, don't like the word raid. Okay, so let's take a look. Now, watch this at the very beginning. So let me get myself out of the screen here. Watch this right here. Okay, this is a clip from MSNBC. What does the Chiron say? It says, breaking news, FBI raids Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. You see that right there? Now, watch. This guy doesn't know what's on the Chiron. He's just sitting in front of a screen. And uh, so he, you know, he can't see what, what that says, but listen to him just cry. Um, agents, by the way. And watch what happens to the Chiron. Watch this part while you're listening to him. We don't like the word raid. They don't like it. It sounds like it's some kind of, you know, extra judi- judicial, non-legal thing. It's the execution watch, of watch, a search warrant. It's watch. a court authorized search warrant. I'm sure we're now going to be in right for here. days of ranting and raving even at cpac over the weekend there was a congressman from arizona who called for the defunding somebody's of the typing FBI before this even happened so we're in for more of that i'm sure they're hunkering down for that but the word raid they don't like it they they want to say they executed a search warrant all of that going on meticulous searching um even you know i, I i've seen situations where there devices, it goes electronic ah! devices thumb drives <laughs> are being searched for and they there actually have dogs i'm they not saying the dogs are being used but if we see dogs oh, um, as part of this team, it, it would be All a right, clue so watch that they're this. possibly okay, so here, searching. Let's watch it. It's right here. Um, even, watch you know, the bottom. I, I, I've seen situations where there devices, it electronic devices, they just change like it. it. They, they want to say they executed a search warrant. All of that going on. Meticulous change searching. Um, and even, you know, I, I, I've seen situations there where it is. devices, electronic devices, <laughs> thumb drives are being searched. Oh, what a bunch of crybabies. It's the execution of a search warrant. It's a court authorized search, he said. 
So the FBI executes a search warrant. It's not a raid. All right. So, you know, he probably has pronouns in his bio and all sorts of stuff. He gets very emotional when you don't use the right language. That is our FBI agent, the uh, purveyors of American security there, Chuck Schumer, warning Donald Trump and others that the FBI might be coming after him because Donald Trump angered them so. And we'll continue to cover this story. All right, my friends, we've got one final segment on the day. We've got to go over to Letitia, the tishiest of all the tishy Jameses. And this is the New York attorney. Oh, yeah. great. The onslaught against Donald Trump continues now with Letitia, the tishiest of all tishies, James. She's the New York attorney general who required Donald Trump to sit for a deposition, fought really hard to make this happen. And this woman has really made her entire career about prosecuting Donald Trump. We've got some highlights. And so uh, uh, warnings already, because we're going to hear a lot of this woman here in a quick minute. But this is the trailer. OK, we are going to take a look at the deposition. What happened there today? Trump waived or invoked the Fifth Amendment. So he didn't answer hardly any questions. So it was a, basically a giant nothing burger. So Letitia Tishy James failed on this one out the gates here. She also right. This woman, we've covered her previously. And if you're not familiar with her, she we're going to watch a trailer. We're going to watch a, a, a teaser and all this stuff of her. But she has these facial contortions when she talks about Donald Trump. We talk about TDS and Trump derangement syndrome. But she gets really like animated in her face. She, this illegitimate president and everything starts to contort and sort of like, you know, twist up kind of like that dark side uh, the evil emperor's kind of face type of thing. You can see it right there. And I, I wanted to just preview that for you because you're going to see that in real time now in this trailer. A lot of these trailers are flying around on the Internet. And so uh, here is a 24 seconds of the, the Tish. Will you sue him for us? All right. We're going to lower that volume a little bit. Sorry about that. Oh, we're going to definitely assume we're going to be a real pain in the ass. I will never be afraid to Here challenge is. this illegitimate president. We need to focus on Donald Trump. We need to follow his money. What is fueling my soul right now is Trump. This illegitimate president. I look forward to going into the office of attorney general every day, suing him and then going home. All right. So you can see, right? Look at her. She's just ranting and raving. Oh, crazy. So she's got, you know, a lot of anger at the former president. And so uh, today she, yeah, sorry about the headphones, everybody. I didn't, I, I didn't cut those clips. Okay. I just downloaded them. I apologize. Whoever, whoever made that clip, thank you for making it, but your audio was not normalized uh, at, at all. And we all have dead end eardrums. My left eardrum is pretty good because there's no earbud in here. My right eardrum is as evaporated as the rest of yours. So uh, we, we don't really need them. If you, you know, you have two of them. Hopefully you have your other one working. If you, if you lost both of them, I apologize. All right. But here, Trump actually arrived now at the scene where the deposition was taking place. Here's one uh, sort of one angle. All right. So, all right, let me, let me play that one more time. Right, so the Trump entourage is sort of rolling in. That's so much security. <laughs> and here is another angle of it. You can see everybody sort of piling in. All for uh, Letitia Tishy Tish James's deposition. Big production. And this is all because this woman has made basically her entire career, her entire election, the reason she is in office, all about the former president. Right? That's the, the entire reason she uh, basically ran. And for a little bit more detail on that, here is the highlight reel of this woman's uh, speeches. I want to see the people who say, oh, well, I'm not going to bother to register to vote because my voice doesn't make a difference or I'm just one person. I say one, I say one name, Donald Trump. That should motivate you. Get off your ass and vote. Will you, <laughs> will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the ass. I know my name personally. I love it. He probably does already. <laughs> he built his wealth off the backs of New Yorkers. We need to focus on Donald Trump and his abuses. We need to follow his money. We need to find out where he's laundered money. All of those transactions have happened here in New York City. Tell this president and every other individual that no one is above the law. 
I say the bottom line is, is that residents from Brooklyn who are going to really make the difference are energized. Individuals from the city are energized. Individuals who care about statewide issues. You see that Tish back there? I told you, right? She was trying to do the, uh, like the Obama thing, like the Tish. I'm Tish James. And she still is, is very animated. He has colluded and that he's it's all Trump. And that it's all, she's still going. All right, like I muted her just so we don't have to listen to all this together. She's still going. It's still about Trump ranting and raving. Uh, no, no, no. Let's listen. Country and who care about our rights and who care about, again, immigrants who are hiding right now. We've got to make some noise. We've got to let our voices know. And what we need is someone who's going to take the fight to White House at the same time. All right. So, you know, a regular campaign rally, it sounds like. Oh, here. Yeah, this is the one. Watch the facial contortions here. OK, this is the good one. This is the one we've all been waiting for. This is where attorney general, because I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president. Oh, there it is. When our fundamental rights are at stake. That's, Legal system. That's the good one right there. That's the one that we're all waiting for. Here it is. One more time. Watch the facial spasm. <laughs> Running for attorney general because I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president when our fundamental rights are at stake. Yeah. A legal system where even the most powerful in the country cannot use a loophole to evade justice. We must do our job to ensure that the man currently occupying the Oval Office right. is held accountable to any and everything he has done. All right. So you can see, right? She is a partisan political hack running for office to prosecute a political enemy, right? In America. And, and like she's giving campaign. It's like, are, can, you help, can you help us solve some problems in our, our state? No. She wants to go and prosecute the president. Well, she, you know, the whole thing culminated. We've covered this case for a long time. Whole thing turns into this deposition. And guess what? Trump invokes the Fifth Amendment rights in the depo. Trump says, did nothing wrong investigation found nothing. Former President Trump invoked his Fifth Amendment rights per advice of his lawyers during his depot with Tishy of the Tishies, calling it unfounded, politically motivated witch hunt and adding that he had, quote, no choice due to the Biden administration and prosecutors across the nation having lost all moral and ethical bounds of decency. Here, here. Trump was set to sit down with the attorneys from the state behind closed doors just days after the FBI raided his property. In a statement on Wednesday, Trump said, what Letitia James has tried to do the last three years is a disgrace to the legal system. It's true. Do we want people running for office like their campaign slogan is I'm going to prosecute other enemies? Saying it's an affront to New York state taxpayers. It's a violation of solemn rights and protections afforded by the United States Constitution saying I did nothing wrong. Which is why, after five years of looking, the federal, state, and local governments, together with the fake news media, have found nothing. We cannot permit a renegade and out-of-control prosecutor to use this investigation as a means of advancing her political career. New York deserves better, and this country deserves better. This is a vindictive and self-serving fishing expedition, the likes of which our country has never seen before. The U.S. Constitution exists for this very purpose, and I will utilize it to the fullest extent to defend myself against this malicious attack by this administration. This AG and other attacks on my family, my business, and my country, Trump said. I once asked, if you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Now I know the answer to that question. Yes! We got Trump now. Don't talk to the cops. Ever. When your family, your company, and all the people in your orbit have become the targets of an unfounded, political, motivated witch hunt supported by lawyers, prosecutor, and the fake news media, you have no choice. If there was any question in my mind, the raid of my home, Mar-a-Lago, on Monday by the FBI just two days prior to the de de deposition, it wiped out any uncertainty, Trump said. I have absolutely no choice because the current administration and many prosecutors in this country have lost all moral, moral and ethical bounds of decency. Accordingly, under the advice of my counsel and for all of the above reasons, I am declined to answer the questions under the rights and privileges afforded to me and to every citizen under the U.S. Constitution. Good call. Good advice. Donald Trump refusing to answer questions, invoking the Fifth Amendment against the continual onslaught, the political prosecutions. This one brought to us by the partisan Tishy, Tish, Letitia James, who today botched the Donald Trump deposition.
and we'll continue to cover this story, see if this matric matriculates or matures into anything useful. And I appreciate you continuing to subscribe and support the show. All right, my friends, and that is it for the segments. And now that means it's time to hear from you. We had a couple of uh, super chats that came in today. Mark Pate started us, us, us off. Thank you, Mark, for that one. And he said, yeah, it's been reported record do donations over to Trumpo and the GOP. And, you know, they already had some pretty good momentum. Why? Gas prices, inflation, world wars, the list goes on and on. So they seemed like they were already making some strides, but we'll have to wait and see. Thanks, Mark. Kifa212 says, what's your thoughts on the raid being used as a distraction of destroying of the ballots, which are slated to be disposed of the first week of September? Oh, I see. So, so I didn't know that, right? I didn't know. So I think Kifa is saying that there are sort of uh, ballots from the prior election that, you know, have uh, retention policies and they are disposed after a certain period of time, saying that maybe the Trump Mar-a-Lago raid was a uh, look over here. It was a shiny object. You know, while, while we cover up all this evidence of nefariousness, uh, look over here and everybody, you know, sort of, uh, and they delete all these documents or, or you know, tarnish them or uh, what's the word? archive them, destroy them? I don't know. It's a good question. I would guess sort of thinking off the cuff that different states have different policies. And so it's probably not like a one-to-one -one where on August 8th, all 50 states were going to be doing the same thing, right? That's why we have different states. And, and uh, so I'm not sure if there would be correlated just on that basis, but you know, it's not a bad question because what else could they be distracting us from, right? What else is, what else is in that wheelhouse? We don't know. And those came over from YouTube. Thank you to our YouTube friends. Uh, John McGarvey sent in a locals super chat. That's what that one looks like. And so thank you, John McGarvey, for that one. And our locals chat is chatting away over there. Savvy Sue, Jeff Rook. And now let's go over to the comments thread and see what our community has to say over here. So we just did a quick refresh on this and we are scrolling down to the bottom. And here's where we're starting today. John. M16 is here. He's sharing a Twitter status from Kyle Cheney. Let's see what this one says. Kyle Cheney says, oh, we covered that. Yeah. So uh, the magistrate judge, Judge Reinhardt, is ordering the DOJ to respond. And so we covered that one. Thank you for that. That's from John uh, M16. Yeah, that was in the court docket today. And we'll see what the government says. TOS Forever says, down the hatch. It's a whimsical Wednesday watching the Watchers community and all who join us. Yeah, I said in the comments thread, throw the comments down the hatch and we can get them in the comments thread. Jason on blast says Biden's America still smells like crap today. Same as every other day in the Democrat Party America. Good to see you, Jason on blast. And it is true. They are uh, certainly stinky. And I think a big part of that is probably uh, Jerry Nadler, who's, you know, waddling around Congress. So Hopefully somebody does something about that. Three Girlies is here. Shout out to Three Girlies and the youngest girly says, I posted this yesterday, but didn't get an answer. It was about what the lawyer said on Jesse Waters' show. Oh, I apologize for that, Heather. Sometimes I miss things. As a criminal defense attorney, what would you have done if that happened to one of your clients? Why wouldn't a lawyer be able to stay and watch them take items and insist on itemization? So I, I think it's the national security component to this, right? Like if that lawyer doesn't have national security clearances or something, then you've got all sorts of protocols. So it's hard for me to actually opine on it, right? Because I'm not a national security lawyer. I don't, you know, I don't know how that works. But uh, presumably I would, if I were working for Trump, I would know more about that and I would know what my, um, what my powers would be as a lawyer, what I can see and, and all of that. So it's hard for me to speculate because it, it, some of this stuff might have been classified. Why wouldn't a lawyer be able to stay and watch them and take items and insist on itemization? I think just because of that, this seems rather abnormal to not get a copy of the warrant and no lawyer representation when they're hovering, hoovering up evidence. I agree completely. Yeah, I agree. Heather. It's highly problematic. Okay. Like, yes, it's highly problematic as a, as the defense lawyer, you're screaming from the rooftops. Yeah. No, I want to be there. I want to see every single thing you do. I want to film the whole thing. Right. And they, they couldn't do any of that. So now you're just taking the FBI's word for it. Like I would have a meltdown is what I would do. Another, a meltdown. Another question that just came to mind, aren't they supposed to give an itemized list of what they have taken and signed off of? Yeah, yes. So you, yes, when they have taken evidence for me in cases, I had to sign off on what they had taken. You would think they'd have some sort of a copy of an itemized list of everything that they took. I know. But this isn't like a regular old, you know, drug crime or something. You know, this is the president. This is Mar-a-Lago. This, this is all outside the bounds of 
anything. There's no proper rhyme or reason to it, which is why it's so difficult to unpack, right? You're, you're, you're exact, but Heather, you're exactly right. It's like, uh, uh, my response is I would melt down. If I were there and, I, you know, a bunch of agents were standing there at a search warrant, I'd be screaming from the rooftops. Don't know it would be effective. I might be in jail with somebody, but I would not be happy about it. Thunder7 says, it's a panty raid. The face stompers spent hours on Melania's wardrobe. Yeah, the FBI agents, maybe they were trying stuff on. Wonder if any of the Gestapo goons took any of her garments with them. Ooh, they are perverted as well as corrupt. Yeah, the FBI, I think it was the Secret Service. Weren't they, you know, uh, hanging out with like Brazilian prostitutes or something? Who was, who was that? Probably the FBI agents too, or maybe, maybe they're into other things, you know, worse things. Who knows? Here is C. Rose. He says, hey, Rob, I heard a lot of news sites reporting that a federal judge would not issue a warrant without some sort of illegal activity says they must not have read their crim pro books, heard of probable cause or how easy it is to meet that requirement. Seems to me a lot of judges, magistrates rubber stamp these warrants anyways. Thoughts? Yes, absolutely they do. Yeah, they have uh, they have judges like for DUIs, for example, they have judges like like, OK, so just just so people know how fast this can go. There are judges that will sign a warrant on a DUI case within 15 minutes. Boom. OK, so a cop pulls you over. Uh, you know, get out of the car, refuse the whole thing, uh, send it off. This guy's refusing. Why is he refusing? They just fax it to the judge or email it over electronically sign it. Judge looks at it. Uh, how many DUIs do I have here today? Approved, 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 approved. Back in like 30 minutes. The whole thing's over in like 30 minutes. So yeah, if it's rubber stamped all day long and you know, and the, and the cop, like the cops just no. uh, they, they, they repeat the same litany. Bloodshot, watery eyes, odor of intoxicating beverage, slurred speech, unsteady on his feet. Okay, all of these things. And the, and the judge just says, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I need to, in order to approve a warrant. So, therefore, it's approved. And it happens all night long. So, here, uh, additional thoughts. P.S. Unbreakable is the best Bruce Willis movie. Uh, you know, C. Rose is not, he's not off on this one. C. Rose is usually like, I mean, you know way out of left field, like way out of bounds. He's not even close to reality. But this this statement is not that bad. Unbreakable is the best. I mean, it is a good movie. It's true. Fifth Element is obviously better, but you're not. It's like this is not the pineapple pizza, you know, catastrophe. <laughs> this is not the Pepsi versus Coke ridiculousness. This is, you know, I can, we, we can debate this one. P.S. If I become a lawyer, do I need to add nothing burger to my vocabulary? Do I use that a lot? Did I say nothing burger? Did I say that today? I don't think you need to add it. I mean, unless I say it, if I say it, then actually, if I say it, you probably shouldn't say it. Just use it. Do the opposite of what I do. And you'll probably have a lot more success. Uh, thank you for that one. C Rose Sergeant Bob is here. He says, what is the issue with security cameras? If the search is being done properly, I do not consider the FBI as part of ethical law enforcement community. I think many of the real police would agree. I, again, I think it's national security. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, I've never represented a president who's been raided by the FBI. So I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, nobody has. OK, because it's never happened before. So I'm not alone on this one. OK, nobody has ever represented anybody in a situation like this because it's never happened. So I don't know, Sergeant Bob. I don't really have any idea. Former LEO says Biden revoked all of his former POTUS Trump security clearance right after the mush brain was sworn in. This was done so that he was locked out of the national security loop. Obama is still in the loop because of his security clearance. It wasn't revoked as it was with President Trump. Thank you for that. That came in from former LEO. Ed J says, I have an issue with the people in charge of the FBI, but what about the agents that knowingly allow themselves to be used as goons during the dirty work of corrupt politicians? I thought if they were asked to do something using unnecessary force or not, they could say no. Am I wrong? None of these guys have any integrity. Uh, you know, it's a good question. This is from Ed J. And this is like kind of the age old question. You know, I have. I have on this channel, I interviewed a former gosh, I can't remember his name right now. It was a long time ago, but he he was a former police officer for like 20 years, got his pension, retired, came on this channel and I interviewed him. And I said one of my questions to him was, you know, you're here consulting. I was a lot nicer back then. But I said, look, you, you're somebody who was a police officer for a long time, and you now work with defense attorneys to sort of unpack what other police officers did wrong. Very common thing. Police officers or forensic scientists, they flip sides, they become investigators. 
or, uh, you know, forensic scientists really on the other side. And in, you know, in, in many cases, right, I asked this guy, you know, you were a part of the problem for 20 years. So now you're on the other side of it. Why should we trust you? Why should we believe you? You know, what, what, what gives, how can you just be on one side for so long and then switch? And he said, you know, his answer was what you'd expect. Uh, when I was in there, I wanted to improve the system from within the system. And then I realized I couldn't do so much. And so then I left and it's okay, I guess. That's a fine answer, you know. Uh, we do want good cops, right? We don't want all the good cops to leave. So I guess you want them to stay there. And, you know, we want the good FBI agents to stay there. But, I, you know, so maybe it's just a leadership problem, right? Maybe they're sort of begrudgingly going along with this. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're all as, as deputized and as excited as can be. We don't know. But at this point, I don't think it matters, right? The FBI as an institution has lost its legitimacy, its credibility. It's gone. doesn't matter where it starts, at the top or the bottom, wherever. Everybody looks at the FBI, including jurors, and they say, you guys are just full of it. NY Renal MD says, in the federal system, isn't a separate warrant required for a safe with a specific information on its content that satisfies the warrant? Uh, I don't know if there's a specific safe-like requirement, but the, like the warrant, the warrant might be inclusive of the safe. So it could be broad enough to in include the safe. So again, we don't know what the warrant says, so it's hard to speculate. Vientica says, I'm pretty sure that those on team Jackass who believe the Uniparty isn't real are hoping that Trump becomes the team peanut candidate so that they can definitely win against him. Yeah, so the idea on this one is Trump is a weak candidate. Put Trump up there, field a very strong Democratic candidate, throw Biden on his butt, get rid of Kamala, bring in Gavin Newsom, this nice shiny object that looks like a Ken doll. Everybody says, oh, wow, he's nice and new and shiny. And he's talking about hope and change. And everybody goes, oh, I like hope and change. I'm going to vote for this guy. You know, and so we get that whole ordeal. And uh, I, I really think that's a real possibility. And uh, it's a scary one. Also, there are just certain things I would like to have people held to their own standards for in general, namely guilty until proven innocent. I, I think I think you're talking about Swalwell, but I'm not sure on that one. But good to see you, Vienticus. Thanks for modding down the fort. Miss Lucky and Sergeant Bob say, perhaps this is what it will take to push the swamp Republicans aside and replace them with new Republicans who have some, can I say, male testosterone producing organs. Yeah, I think that's PC and that's probably YouTube friendly. Thunder7 says, Rob, do you think Trump is hiding Obama's birth certificate? <laughs> In the boxes, I remember he offered just one million to anybody who could get him the original. Uh, I doubt that those are in there, Thunder 7, but that's really funny. Oh, it's Jake from Oxford. Oh, he's the smartest person on the show. He says, you guys had me going for a minute. The judge supposedly worked for Epstein and also was the judge against Trump in another case up until recently. FBI going through the first lady's closet, refusing anyone from seeing what was taken from the house, breaking into an empty safe that was or was not on the search warrant. The only thing the FBI didn't do was shoot the family dog when entering the home. This was looking bad. But Rob, you said it yourself. There is an informant. That is why the FBI had to try on Melania's clothes. Oh, the final piece of the puzzle comes into play. That is why they raided his fridge and made sandwiches. Let's face it. The FBI is 10 and 0 against cases that have informants. Hang on, Rob. Dave is yelling something in the background, something about the Steele dossier. Oh, crap. <laughs> so so uh, it's Jake from, uh, from uh, Oxford. You know, he's Biden's national security advisor, way smarter than us. Okay, so first of all, I had to learn this. So if, if you didn't know this, it's not, well, you are dumber than Jake Oxford, uh, Jake from Oxford. I am way dumber. So uh, we're all in the same category on this, but it goes Oxford, Harvard, then the rest of us. And he's at the top. So he's very educated and he's hanging out with, uh, <laughs> with other people. FBI is uh, twirling around uh, in Melania's clothes. Kenny Cole says, can't wait for the midterms. I think all this chest thumping over an inflation bill that boosts the IRS was the left painting over their actual feelings on the coming wipeout. Americans can smell a commie from a while away. They are stinky. Miss Lucky, Sergeant Bob says, this action only proves the culture of the Hoover FBI in terms of political interference, political prosecution, and criminal behavior is alive and well. A full understanding 
of the Hoover FBI is essential to understand what's taking place today. Chucky's comments confirm this. And the intelligence community involves the incompetence and the lying of the FBI with the Russian hoax. Oh, it's Jake from Oxford. He's explaining to Sergeant Bob. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Rob, can you tell Sergeant Bob how racist home security cameras are? That's why they wanted them off, Sergeant Bob. FBI said, are those those racist electronic monitoring devices? Turn those off. So that's what's going on, Sergeant. He says, maybe you can explain to him how the FBI compared to real police is the equivalent to you, a public defender. Yeah. Compared to me, a lawyer from Oxford. Yeah, like totally different classes. Remember, it's all about certificates. And while we're on the subject, how do you and I hire a stenographer like, like Miss Lucky? She is on it. Sergeant Bob must have it good over there. <laughs> so, 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 so Miss Lucky, so Sergeant Bob, so, so, so it's Jake from Oxford is, is, uh, is saying that Miss Lucky is doing a great job transcribing all of Sergeant Bob's comments. <laughs> Uh, well, they do make a good team. You know, they can order a mean pizza together in a very diplomatic fashion and it shows up and they don't murder each other every, every time they have dinner. It's great. NY Renal says, John Heilman, your former employer, the New York Times published a page on the raid before Trump had even said a thing from NY Renal. Jeff Rook says, okay, everybody, let's not st throw stones. There's plenty to judge the honorable Mr. Fartwell for, but 90% of his opponents would also line up to go bang, bang with Fang Fang. Serious question, though. My, my wife is Chinese. Uh, uh, you know, okay. My wife is Chinese. If she's a spy, does that mean the CCP thinks I'll gain high office? It'd be oddly reassuring if an authoritarian regi regime believes I'm destined to accomplish great things. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Jeff. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, shout out to Jeff's Chinese wife who's hopefully not a Chinese spy. But if you are, maybe Jeff Rook will be the new leader of the Chinese CCP. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see Jeff and President Xi up there on, uh, on the big, you know, paintings they put up all over the place over there. Thank you, Jeff. Sergeant Bob says, the more this goes on, the more I support and admire President Trump. Vientica says, the Russian hacking Chuck was talking about was the non-hack of the DNC servers. Yeah. Sergeant Bob also chiming in says, Old junior college business law teacher often said, quote, a rose by another name is still a rose that supplies to raid. Thank you for sparing us any verbiage from Cheney. She is worse than cackling Kamala, although James was painful. We had a lot of pain today. Yeah. Tishy, Latishy, James, rough. Wild Child says, Rob, the definition of the word a raid is a sudden attack on an enemy by troops, aircraft, or other armed forces in warfare. The FBI is sounding pretty raidy to me. It's a good point. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> it's a political assault, essentially, is what it was. And uh, it's, yeah. Uh, words mean things is here. Says, Rob, remind me to never watch a movie with you that come that you've already watched. Just wait. Here it comes. Here it comes. Okay, yeah, so I, yeah, so I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. So right, when I, we were watching, and, and it didn't come, right? It didn't come like uh, when, we, when we wanted it to. So I was a little bit off on that one. But yeah, I'm that guy on the couch. Are you paying attention? It's coming up. Did you see this? Watch this. This is important. Thank you. Words mean things. It's Jake from Oxford says, Rob, you've redeemed yourself. Nothing says freedom like bootylicious James voice level over 9,000. Everyone watching today is required to make that your new morning alarm. That is beautiful. And everyone would wake up in such a pleasant mood. Yeah. So uh, Jake is happy that I was able to sear into your eardrums. Letitia James voices with level 9,000 volume. Thunder seven says, don't know if you've mentioned this as I've missed your morning talks, but judge Reinhardt recused himself in the Trump case, but not in this raid case. Is it a criminal case? Yeah, I, I did talk about that. Thunder seven in the morning walk and talk uh, today. And uh, yes, the judge did, but you're right. I didn't talk about it here. So let's pull this up real quickly. Here is this uh, notice that Thunder seven was talking about. This case is Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. It's a civil case out of the Southern District of Florida. Notice of recusal came in from Bruce Reinhardt. That's the same judge who uh, issued the search warrant in the Donald Trump case. So the question then, right, as I was sort of speculating about this morning, was the conflict here is between the judge and Clinton, not the judge and Trump. So the judge and Clinton have some sort of issue. 
and he got off the case because she was involved. Clinton's not involved in the search warrant, so the judge is not recusing himself from the search warrant. I still think it is problematic, right, that this judge is sort of, uh, I'd, I'd like to know a lot more about their basis for this recusal. I still don't know what the reason is for it, uh, but I did see this because we had talked some about the Trump and the Hillary Clinton case, and uh, we did sort of muse about that on the morning walk and talk today. If you're a member or a supporter, uh, you can certainly go check those out. Thank you, Thunder7. Former LEO says, how can a prosecutor make these types of statements and not be removed from prosecuting Trump? Because it's an elected position. The, the weird people of New York, like that's what they want. That's what makes them and their lives better, I guess. Like most people running for office are like, we're going to lower your taxes and we're going to fix the border and we're going to make sure that you're getting paid appropriate wages and that you have health care and all this crap. New Yorkers are like, I don't care about any of that. Crime, uh, you murder me for all I care. Yeah, I don't care. Let the criminals free. Who cares? I only care about Donald Trump. My whole life is based around this man. So, you know, it's a weird thing to, to be a part of, but they voted for it and she's doing what they voted for. So she'll probably get reelected. Says, I know that a prosecutor's job is, quote, a search for the truth and not a witch hunt to obtain a conviction. Yeah, that's hilarious, former Elio. Real funny joke. Thanks. Bossy B says, just catching up on today's show, enjoyed the morning walk and talk and appreciate your coverage of this. Have you seen Dave Chappelle's I Plead the Fifth? I don't think so. How? I don't think so. How have I not seen that? The one that I saw most recently, remember, remember the one where he knocks over the water? And he runs out of the room. <laughs> just saw that one. John McGarvey says, I'll try to remember the Stasi rules of, uh, of YouTube. Thank you, John. Oh, here it is. Bossy B. I'm not going to play this one here on the, on YouTube. Cause I'll probably get a copyright uh, ding, but, uh, but yeah, it's, I'll probably get a copyright ding on it, but, uh, but certainly go check that out. If you're on our locals community, that's the one that they're talking about. Let's do a quick refresh before we wrap it up for the day, my friends. And, um, and yeah, we got some more here. All right. So former LEO is here. He says that Hoover wore a tutu. Jeremy says classified documents are not left in the open. They will be inside a folder titled classified. That is assuming he didn't classify everything he brought before declassify everything before he brought them home in his presidential library. It's from Jeremy. Yeah, they should be in a folder. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing Trump is not like, you know, have uh, classified documents splayed out all over the breakfast table, but you know, who knows? Former LEO says Hoover wore a tutu. Jeff Rook says on a more serious note, it feels like the goal is to completely wipe from social consciousness that there are reasons to fight. It's like they determined to erase from the human condition. The fact that there's always a line that an individual won't cross that everyone has a hill they're willing to die on more on the specifics. I'm concerned more than the specifics. I'm concerned by the overall tone. When governments fear the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. They seem hell-bent on taking from the citizenry any and all rights they would need to to instill fear in their government. I think that's what this is about, right? Uh, on our prior, one of our prior morning walk and talks, uh, the word that I was saying is going to be, I think, a very impactful word over the next decade is enforceability. And that's closely related to legitimacy. And when the U.S. government, the feds more, more specifically, when their legitimacy evaporates, so does their enforceability. They're not going to be able to enforce a bunch of stuff if nobody thinks they're credible and legitimate. And when that happens, they're going to try to artificially inflate their enforceability. Right? If you have a government that has high state capacity that can really solve a lot of your problems for you, then you sort of are more okay following them and being in alignment with what they want for the country, the direction of the country. But when they're not doing that, when your, uh, your, your, your average prices are going up eight percent every month or quarter or you know gas prices are fluctuating all over the place right it's a huge problem state loses capacity and the ability to be seen as legitimate the corresponding ability to enforce also evaporates so they will bootstrap that that's why they need 87,000 new IRS agents because they realize that their ability to contain this very wild bull called the American people is about to go out the door and they are trying to make sure that this bull has all sorts of, uh, you know, all sorts of straps to contain this wild beast from breaking free. And, and what they're trying to do is, yes, I think you're exactly right. Demoralize you, your political leader. He's, he's irrelevant. We're going to take him out your taxes, pay them all. You're going to be taken out, stay in your homes. If you don't, you're going to be taken out. We, we are prosecuting people who even 
oppose us. We are banning people from the internet who are speaking out. We are disbanding communities all over the place, right? And we are making it difficult to speak out. It's to demoralize you. That's okay. I'm not demoralized. I hope you aren't either. Former LEO says, if you asked any real law enforcement officer what the, the worst thing that could happen during an arrest, it would be the FBI arriving. You see that in the movies too. Jason on blast says, Eric Trump said the Mar-a-Lago security, captures, uh, security cameras captured FBI agents behaving improperly. Let's take a look at this one. Over from the Gateway Pundit says, uh, Eric Trump says Mar-a-Lago security cameras captured FBI agents behaving improperly. We'll have to see the footage. And that was over in the Daily Mail article. Yeah, so thank you for that. That came over from Jason on Blast. Sergeant Bob says, thank you, Jake. You are way smarter than I, but Sergeant Bob types it all by himself. Sergeant Bob is his own. He's he's multi-talented individual. Okay, he's just blah, 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 blah. Take that, Jake. Sousen Academy says, have you noticed that the people mostly after Trump are the females? Hillary, Liz, Nancy, Letitia, and others, Maxine Waters. It is, if my opinion, they all had a thing for him and they turn and he turned them down. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe he wanted uh, them. To, maybe they wanted Trump to grab him by the clavicle. I don't know. You know, who knows? Maybe that's what Cassidy Hutchinson wanted too. you know, there's a lot of a lot of clavicles out there that, uh, you know, sometimes can be neglected. And we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So not a bad point, Sousen Academy. Here is another one. From Thunder7 says, Rob, your coverage is great. I'm learning so much about presidential records and how Sandy Berger stuffed classified docs down his pants. Can't make this up. Yeah, and you can also learn about Lois Lerner, who deleted two years worth of documents and emails when she was conducting inquisitions of Republicans using the IRS. Sergeant Bob says, right on, former LEO on the FBI, which I think is, right, right. I think basically every single uh, law enforcement, F the feds are here. Uh, remember in Die Hard when the feds showed up, everybody's like, oh, great. What do they do? They like blow up the building, right? They wreck everything. Bruce Willis, another good Bruce Willis movie, C. Reed. That's also in the rankings, by the way, Die Hard, which happens to be one of the best Christmas movies of all time. And so that, my friends, is it for us for the day. We are going to be back here to do it all again tomorrow. I want to thank everybody who participated in the program everybody who's chatting away at our amazing community over at watching the watchers dot locals dot com or joining us as members over on our youtube membership it's right next to that subscribe button which is right next to that thumbs up like button which i appreciate it if you got us to a thousand before you got out of here that'd be amazing and safety clarity and hope okay that's what we do every day i was in the office today meeting with the team we have such an amazing team of people super passionate about the work that we do and we are very excited to help good people charged with crimes find safety, clarity, and hope, not only in their cases, but beyond that, in their lives. We offer free case evaluations, 480-787-0394. And we really appreciate you thinking about us for your referrals. Anybody in the state of Arizona in any type of trouble, that's what we do at my office, the R&R Law Group. We're grateful for you sending people our way. Thank you to the mods who modded down the fort for us. We have K Bean in the house, Just Cause. We've got Lean and Playing Hooky all modding down the fort. Vienti Kiss, of course, making sure that everything is nice and orderly. Final shout out to our Spotlight supporters who support the show with a little extra love. We've got John over at QSimple.com. Thank you, John. Chris Romero, David B3, and Dr. EMB in the house. And if you want some additional real estate on this segment of the program to you know, promote a social profile, promote a website, link up to something, you can, because there's some really nice, valuable real estate here. And there's a nice room for some more Spotlight supporters. If that's something that you're interested in, we are grateful for all of you. And that, my friends, is it for the show. We are going to be back here to do it again tomorrow. It will be Thursday. We'll see what the news has for us. We'll be, of course, ready with our morning walk and talk for all of our members on Locals and on YouTube. And so be sure to check that out. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing evening, a very restful sleep. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.